Good morning, everybody. I'm Pastor David from Trinity Lutheran Church and in Bloomington, Illinois. Um, this is our daily Lenten devotion. It's a devotion that uh, was written by 40 of our folks at Trinity. And uh, we're going through the book of Mark. And right now we are in chapter 7. And so I encourage you to get out your Bibles uh, and chapter 7, verses 24 through 37. I hope you've uh, been able to have some time outdoors, uh, whatever that looks like for you. Uh, and uh, these last few days, and it's been gorgeous, hasn't it? So let's go ahead and dive into God's Word. I'm going to read it um, at a level pace. Uh, and to give you a little time to let it sink in, but also to encourage you, uh, however you're reading scripture, highlight it, uh, circle it, uh, maybe asterisk something that you want to go back to later. Uh, I have learned uh, that when I read the Bible, highlighting things are helpful for me in that moment, but they are especially helpful for me later when I read, whether rereading a note that I wrote or uh, just something that stuck out to me. So let's go ahead. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get my Bible. It's on my iPad, which is being charged right now. So let's do this. I'm going to, it'll take me eight seconds and I will be right back um, maybe focus on the cross for a few seconds, okay? I'm back. I have one of those charge cords that sometimes doesn't charge and so uh, um, I was making sure it was charging this morning. Uh, Mark 7. Starting with the 24th verse. Then Jesus left Galilee and went north to the region of Tyre. He didn't want anyone to know which house he was staying in, but he couldn't keep it a secret. Right away, a woman who had heard about him came and fell at his feet. Her little girl was possessed by an evil spirit, and she begged him to cast out the demon from her daughter. Since she was a Gentile born in Syrian Phoenicia, Jesus told her, First I should feed the children, my own family, the Jews. It isn't right to take food from the children and throw it to the dogs. She replied, that's true, Lord, but even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plates. Good answer, he said. Now go home, for the demon has left your daughter. And when she arrived home, she found her little girl lying quietly in bed, and the demon was gone. Jesus left Tyre and went up to Sidon before going back to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Ten Towns. A deaf man with a speech impediment was brought to him, and the people begged Jesus to lay his hands on the man to heal him. Jesus led him away from the crowd so they could be alone. He put his fingers into the man's ears. Then, spitting on his own fingers, he touched the man's tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Aphatha, which means be opened. Instantly, the man could hear perfectly, and his tongue was freed so he could speak plainly. Jesus told the crowd not to tell anyone. But the more he told them not to, the more they spread the news. They were completely amazed and said again and again, Everything he does is wonderful. He even makes the deaf to hear and gives speech to those who cannot speak. This is the word of the Lord our devotion today is entitled On Behalf of Others and is written by Trinity member Mary Beth Bartz. 
Can you heal my child? Will you please help my friend? Have you ever said these words or heard someone else say them? In today's passage, we meet a mother in Tyre and a group of people from Sidon, both of whom are begging Jesus to heal someone for whom they care deeply. The mother humbly and persistently pleads with Jesus to remove an evil spirit from her daughter who is at home. The group from Sidon pleads for Jesus to lay his hands on a man who is deaf and unable to speak. Jesus responds to both pleas in unique ways and provides healing to the daughter and to the man. Have you prayed recently for a relative or friend who is physically sick or needs spiritual healing? Someone who has lost hope or needs encouragement? Sometimes our friends and relatives are not praying for healing, so we must pray on their behalf. God responds to our heartfelt prayers and petitions for others in ways unique to their situation. We have two reflection questions. The first one is, have you ever begged or pleaded on behalf of someone? And the second one, who needs your prayers today? Mary Beth wrote a prayer for our devotion and I'd like to read that prayer and I invite you to join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, please prompt me to pray for someone specific today who needs physical or spiritual healing. Amen. I also want to read our Kids Connection. I don't always read this. They're always really good and helpful for a family. I want to read this one because I think it would be good for all of us. Jesus responds to prayer. Who do you know that needs prayer? As a family, write down each person or use a photo or drawing in the specific prayer for that person and commit to praying for them each night during Lent. God's richest blessings upon your day. Uh, we have worship tonight at 4 and 6. We uh, invite you to join us. Um, and, uh, of course, we have worship on Sunday. God's peace to you. God's blessings upon your day. Bye.